Your ability to complete word problems depends on your understanding of division versus multiplication, the concept of it. Here's a very basic example you would have learned a few years back. If I have $10 and I share that money, I'm going to share this money with, let's say, five people. Each person would get $2. He would get $2. He would get 2 He would get 2 They would all get $2 each. So what do we know from this concept? We know a couple things. Number one, for a question to be division, there has to be equal sharing. Now, we don't have to use the word sharing. We can use the word portion. If we're dealing with food, we can deal with things like sharing equally. But the idea is that they have to be equal amounts. That's going to be division. Sometimes division looks like a fraction. This here would be 10 divided by 5. It looks like a fraction, and it is, because fractions indicate the process of division. So this here would be 10 divided by 5, which is $2 each. Now, if I reverse this process, and each of these five people who have $2, if they put their money together, what are you going to get? You're going to get $10. How do we represent that? One way is to go 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, five times. Or you can just say 5 times 2. And that's going to make 10. Multiplication involves putting things back together again. Division involves splitting them up, dividing them into equal sized portions. Also, you can use the word of to indicate multiplication only if you have a number here and a number on the other side. If you have two numbers on each side and the word of is in the middle, you know yourself that you've got a multiplication equation. Even if you don't understand the fact that you're adding things together, it means multiply. Let's look at this example here. It states that a recipe calls for two and a half cups of chocolate chips to be sprinkled into a batch of five dozen cookies. On average, how many cups of chocolate chips would be in each cookie? Assume that a dozen contains 12 cookies. We know a couple things here. We know that five dozens is going to be 12 plus 12 plus 12 five times. So I'm going to write five times 12. That's going to be 60 cookies. So I'm going to scratch five dozen. I'm going to write 60 instead just to make it simpler. Now you have to ask yourself, are you putting things together or are you splitting things up? We're splitting things up, right? But what are we splitting up? Are we splitting up chocolate chips or are we splitting up cookies? We're splitting up chocolate chips. We're holding the bag of chocolate chips, two and a half cups. We're holding them all and we're sprinkling them equally onto each cookie. So that means we're taking all this stuff and we're going to divide it up. Now that number has to come first. The number that you're going to be dividing up, that number has to come first. So we're going to put the chocolate chips first and we're going to divide them among 60 cookies. Let me ask you this. If you divide chocolate chips up, what's your answer going to be in? Chocolate chips. Exactly. Now how do we do this here? Well, we're going to convert this to a, a right, an improper fraction. And then we're going to flip the sign and we're going to, yeah, that's right. 60 over 1 is 1 over 60. And that's going to make 5 over what? 5 over 120. Now let's reduce this. How do we reduce this? Because we're not going to write 5 over 120. We are going to reduce it. And we know that 5 goes into both. And so that's going to make 1 over, 1 over what? 24. Chocolate chips. Chocolate chips. Now this is a multiple choice exam, so all we have to do is find the right answer, and it's going to be A. Now why didn't I show you the answers to begin with? Well, because I believe whenever you have multiple choice, you know what you do? You just actually find the answer the way that you learned to find the answer, and then like show all your work first, and then find the answer after that, and hopefully you find a match. Otherwise, you know you did something wrong. Let's look at the second one. Alexis, now this is a tough one, so pay attention. Alexis is 156 centimeters tall. She 
is 12 thirteenths the height of her friend Mala. How tall is Mala? I don't know. Let's figure it out. We know something here. We know Alexis is 156 centimeters tall. Then it says she. Who is she? Alexis. Right. So we're going to scratch she out. We're going to write 156 instead. 156 centimeters. What does the word is mean in math? Come on, you got to know this. If I said, what is 2 plus 2, what would you tell me? You'd say, Mr. Mellum, 2 plus 2 is, ah, 4. So what does is mean? It means equals. And 12 thirteenths, okay, we got a fraction, the height of her friend Mala. That's going to be a number there. We're going to have to figure this out. We don't know what it is. Now look, we have a number. We have the word of. We have Another number here, that's a mystery. We know that of means times because it's between two numbers. So we're going to show this equation. We're going to write 156 equals what? We're going to write 12 over 13 times a mystery number. That's going to be Mala's height. Now if I made this simpler, if I said 6 equals, put a number here, 3 times blank, you would say to get the answer to that blank, that mystery number, you would go the opposite of times. You would say 6 divided by 3. You would go 6 divided by 3 equals that number, which would be 2, right? You do the opposite. So we're going to go and do the same thing here. We're going to say 156 divided by 12 over 13. And that's going to make our mystery number. So how do we divide these two? Well, we're going to take 156, we're going to multiply by 13 over 12. Now look, you could do the work, and if you did, you're going to get 169. Here's another question. Jonathan spends $45 on clothes and entertainment each month. He spends two-thirds of this on his clothes. How much money does he spend on his clothes each month? This sounds like maybe it's possibly a division question because he's going to take money and he's going to split it up among different things. But it doesn't say he's going to split it equally. And that means it cannot be division. Division has to involve equal splitting of things. What it does say, however, is two-thirds of this. And we see the word of. We know what this is. This is 45 bucks. So we're going to write 45 of is surrounded by two numbers, so it means times. And we're just going to times them, guys, you know. We're just going to times them. Times 45 over 1. That's going to make 90 over 3, which is, hey, what's 9 divided by 3? Three? 3. And I'm just put the 0 beside it. You got 30 what? $30. Right? Let's move on to this one. Sam has two sons. Here's son number 1. Here's son number 2. Every single morning, each morning, he makes sure that each of them drinks, each of them drinks one and one-fifth cups. So he drinks one and one-fifth cup, and he drinks one and one-fifth cups of milk. If he is pouring the milk out of a jug that contains, so here's the jug, let's say it's a big jug, and it's got seven and one-fifth cups, then how many days will it take to use up all of the milk in the jug? What are we doing here? Right, we're splitting the milk up into portions. We've got a total amount, and we're going to break it up into portions for day one, and day two, and so forth, until we run out of milk. But how big is each portion? Is it one and one-fifth? Nuh-uh, it's not one and one-fifth, because he's given each kid one and one-fifth. This is one and one-fifth, plus one and one-fifth, or you could say one and one-fifth, times 2. So turn this into an improper fraction, times it by 2 over 1, and you're going to get what? Right, 12 over 5 cups is what he gives his kids every single day. So we're going to take the thing that we're splitting first, remember, the thing that you split goes first, and we're going to divide it among portions that are 12 over 5 cups. Now we know how to divide. This is going to be 36 over 5. 
And there's going to be times, flip the sign, and flip the fraction. And we're going to go like this. And then we're going to do a little bit of math here. We're going to go 5 times 6 is 30. Carry the 3. That makes 18 here. And we're going to divide it by what's 12 times 5? 60, right. Now look, what's 18? Here's a shortcut. What's 18 divided by 6? 3. And the zeros cancel. What, Mr. Mom, what did you just do? Just count by 60. 60, 120, 180. Right? So we have 18 divided by 6 is 3. 0 divided by 0 just cancels out. We get 3 days. So we have day 1, day 2, and 3 days. They're out of milk. And the last question here, we have a rubber ball is dropped from a height of 24. Okay, we can show that. That's not hard. Here's the ball. We're going to make a line to the ground. And we're going to say that's 24 centimeters. Now, after each bounce, the ball rose, the ball rose, three-fourths of what? Of its last height. How far did the ball travel after two bounces? The ball's going to go two bounces, right? Okay. After the first bounce, it's going to travel down. It's going to go do 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 boom 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 It's going to bounce up, but it's only going to go three-fourths of the way up. So it's going to go three-fourths of, aha, uh -huh, times... And do we have a number for the last height? Yeah, so that means of has to mean times. And the last height in the first case is 24. 24 over what? 24 over 1. And if you multiply these, you're going to get what? You're going to get 12, carry the 1, you're going to get 72 over 4. Now, what's that going to make? What's 72 divided by 4? Well, you're going to go 4 divided, how many times does 4 go into 72? Right, you're going to get yourself 18. It's going to be 18 centimeters. That's after bounce one. It's going to go 18 centimeters back up. Now, how about bounce two? Because it's going to fall back down, right? And then it's going to go up three quarters of the way. It's going to go up to here. Now, how high is that? Well, it's going to be what? Three-fourths of the last height. So we're going to go three-fourths of, and the last height is 18 over one, we're going to multiply these. We're going to get what? What's 18 times 3? Right. 54 over 4. Hey, what's 54 divided by 4? Look, you might need to do this. That's okay. You know, just do some long division. It's not a big deal. There's nothing to be ashamed of for doing long division. You're going to get 13. Hope you're following along with my division. I'm assuming, I'm pretending like you know what's going on here. I'm not teaching you every step of long division. I'm just teaching you to do it. And that's going to make decimal 5. So that's going to make 13 decimal 5. Now, are we done? Mr. Mom, we have to be done, right? Because we did two bounces. Not quite. Because now it says, how far did the ball travel? How far did it go? Well, it started here, and then it went down 20, right? It went down 24, I mean. But then it went up again, and it went up how much? 18, right? It went up. We got it right here. It went up 18. So we're going to add 18, but then guess what? What goes up? Yeah, it has to come down 18. So we're going to go another 18, and then we're going to get 13.5 more. 